a lot of you folks were in our Zoom session on, um, on Monday, but not everybody. So, uh, so um, I'll just sort of recap a few things and just uh, show everybody the, the, uh, the, the um, Canvas page, and then we'll start talking about disasters as we go. Cool? All right, so first let me say hello. So I'm uh, Sean Anderson. Uh, everybody calls me Dr. A. You guys call me Dr. A. Um, and uh, I created this class. We first taught it about three years ago um, because it really seemed to be a, a gap in our um, curriculum, um, particularly given all the stuff that's unfolding and, and all that good stuff. And we first taught it, and it was during the pandemic, and it sort of sucked because everybody was virtual and far away. And the next year, we thought we were going to be fully face to face, and we kind of were face to face, but we had some craziness. Um, uh, Dr. O'Hyrick taught it last year, so this is really my first year of actually teaching it where we're all together and, and, and face to face, so it's great, even though we started off <laughs> online. Um, so it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, the other great thing about our, even though this is a, just a three unit class, so it's unlike some of the other classes, we do a lot of a field and data collection and stuff. Nevertheless, we will try to get out at least once or twice on um, some field trips here. Um, and I just secured over two days before Christmas our first van that we actually purchased. We have an ESRM van. Uh, yeah, super swank, super swank, uh, super cool. Now, the university hasn't completely understood this yet, so even though they gave me the money and we bought it, um, it's not quite, I don't know if the insurance is totally up to par, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna use it in the first few weeks here, but, but we'll definitely, definitely have it to use, and your other classes have it to use, like I said, after a week or two, we're waiting for some stuff from the, the, the DMB, but, but that's super cool, that's super cool. Um, I've also was a bit slow to start here um, because uh, I and some of you all were with me in Hawaii doing a disaster response class. So we've been um, doing these types of classes for about 20 years here at, at CSUCI, specifically ESRM has been. Really built around service and, and helping folks uh, in ecosystems after a disaster. And, uh, and so we can, I talked a little bit about that on Monday, but um, we'll, we'll talk about that more when we get to our wildfire section and, and, and discussion about that stuff. But happy to answer any questions related to that. Um, uh, unfortunately, because of the way things work when we're in those settings, I didn't really have effective internet, so I couldn't really get everything up and loaded and, and all that. So, so everything, the first two weeks now are uh, clicked on, are locked on though. So, so if you haven't um, checked uh, this morning or so, you can go ahead and check and, and everything should be working. Um, and so I wanted to walk you guys uh, through that. Um, before I get that, I just want to, one more quick note about disasters um, is uh, sort of conceptually how this class is arranged. So, so I might call this class, uh, you know, natural disasters or disasters in the, in the um, course catalog, it says environmental disasters. And so what we're gonna talk about are all types of disasters. Um, both, um, we'll spend some time talking about like the drivers, like how do they, how, how do they physically happen? How do they um, come about? Um, but then also a good amount of time on, on the impacts that, that, that isn't traditionally covered. So most of these, if you go to um, uh, another university, most of these types of courses are in a geology department or a, or a um, earth systems department. And they're really born out, they've historically been born out of folks that um, um, didn't have a lot to teach and sort of were volcanologists or, or earthquake specialists. They were super smart and did great stuff, but there aren't a whole lot of people studying earthquakes. And so the idea of, of a sort of disasters class grew out of the idea of, hey, well, we could maybe do something about this. And so, so those are great classes. I don't mean to, to say they're bad, but, but they, most of these courses really, really have a strong emphasis on the earthquake and, and the shaking and the physics of the, the ground movement and that kind of stuff. We'll mention that, we'll talk about that, but the focus of this class isn't the physics of the shaking. The focus of this class is the whole of these disasters and what the factors that um, are in place that make them more likely to occur or, or make the, the impacts more um, problematic when they occur, and then in the wake of those disasters. So we're trying to look at, we're, this class is trying to take a more holistic look at disasters. Also, I would say that most of these traditional courses are built around, around uh, uh, the classic environmental disasters. So volcano, earthquake, hurricane, wildfire, um, flooding. 
those are all really important. We'll talk about those. Those are, those are very important for you guys to have a sense of. But um, we also, um, in this class, we have a broader definition. So yes, those are, those are real things, but also things like um, disease outbreaks, also things like uh, biological invasions and things of that nature that can lead to um, very potentially very similar consequences but they they're um, very much so have a human origin or have a, have a very much so sort of human influence in terms of how they start um, so all that for us is is what we're going to be talking about this semester um, uh, we are now uh, back uh, so we so our default now should be um, just in this classroom uh, there might be a few there might be a day or two here or there where something happens or whatever that, that we're virtual or whatever, but, but um, we're not gonna be, uh, now that the strike is over, um, we're not gonna be, I don't anticipate having to do that on any kind of routine basis, so, so you guys know. Um, uh, let's see, what ways of the logistics that I wanna mention. Um, yeah, no, I think that's good. So, so why don't we um, take a look at our syllabus, and I'll run through a few things, and then you guys can look at this uh, later today or, or tomorrow or whatever. Um, so this is environmental disasters. So we're meeting, obviously, this is when we meet. Um, our default due date for things, unless I say differently, is going to be end of the week. So, and most of our stuff is organized in modules, which are mostly for one week, some of them in two weeks. But basically, it's like week one, boom. And so unless there's something else stated, the stuff for that week would be due Friday. The week one would be due Friday week one. The stuff for week two would be due Friday week two, like uh, so on and so forth. Um, the, one, the only consistent difference is we'll talk about um, news stories in a second. Um, when you guys post those news stories, um, this is, and if you guys have had me for other classes, we, I do this in my coastal class and other things, I'll be familiar with to you. But um, uh, part of this class is actually getting you all to sort of understand what's going on with disasters right now. And so uh, uh, you guys, I'm asking you guys to read newspapers, to read popular press and sort of see what's going on and to find things relevant to us and you will post those and then uh, on, on a tool that's called um, a scoop it and you should have all gotten an invitation email to that a couple days ago um, but uh, but basically uh, um, you just grab a website grab a news story post it up there once a week and then once a week, um, respond to at least one other person's news story. You can post tons, you can post like five news stories if you want, they think they're cool, that, that would be great. But you only have to do one, and you only have to respond to one other person's. But because of that sort of response, it, everything can't be due on Friday for that particular assignment. So uh, Wednesday at noon. So I ask that everybody have their, have their news story up Wednesday midday. Um, you can do it as soon as Saturday. So, so our sort of week, you know, since we're ending Friday, our sort of next week starts Saturday. If you wanted to get up first thing Saturday morning, read a couple things, post it, get it out of the way, that's cool. Um, but that's our one other default due time is for the news posts Wednesday at noon and then uh, have your response in by Friday at 5. And that, that makes sure that um, people have a chance. There's something for them to look at when they, when they go to look as opposed to everybody doing posting news stories all at uh, 4 59 and then nobody can see stuff. Cool? Okay, great. Um, as far as uh, how you guys catch me, um, you should have also gotten an invitation to our Slack. Um, uh, and that is um, uh, the default way of like quick question, just hey, wonder about this. What, was, it, was it two pages or one page, that, one page that was due, that kind of stuff. Um, go ahead and just poke us on Slack with a general. If I see it, I'll answer. If one of you all see it and you and you know, you remember that I said it was one page or whatever. It's totally cool. Please just chime on it. Oh yeah, he said one page. Um, and that's just a, usually a lot faster to get you guys the questions when you're working on something, you're in the middle of something. So we have, we have so there's a, you can catch me on Slack or catch us on Slack. Um, you can email me. Um, and this is no, nothing against you guys, but I just, I drown in email. So I get hundreds and hundreds of emails a day. And if I were to just do my email, it'd probably take about eight to 10 hours a day. And I just can't keep up. So I try to keep up. Um, so definitely email me. You either get a response really quick or probably you won't get a response for a while. So the, the safest thing is send me an email, no response. Um, I give everybody my, my cell phone, so you guys are more than welcome to use my cell phone as long as you're not calling me at like 11 o'clock at night kind of deal. Um, so go ahead and just send me a text and, hey, Dr. Ray, I, I really had a question. Um, 
I emailed you Tuesday at nine, then I can go sort of hunt for your, your email. So it's not that I don't prioritize you guys, it's just, it's just I, have, I have too many projects and too many things and everybody seems to have my contact. So, uh, so that's how I do it. If you guys want to meet with me, I'd really, really love to meet with you face to face and just talk and, and that's the best way. So, um, so my office hours, I have office hours on uh, Monday and Tuesday. And so Monday, right after this class, and so my Monday office hours are face-to-face, -face, and those are up at Tortillas. And so as soon as we finish up here, unplug my computer, some couple quick questions, answer. I'll just um, walk straight up. I might go get a drink of water or something real quick, but basically you walk straight up to Tortillas. You're more than welcome to just grab me, and we can walk and talk together. But my Monday office hours are in person in Tortillas. If it's, as long as it's not raining, I'll probably be on the patio. And if it's raining, probably like inside. Um, so that's Monday, Tuesday is Zoom. Uh, uh, Tuesday is Tuesday afternoon, three to four, right before my. Um, we have a uh, Tuesday meeting for my uh, Maui class, so right before that, and so that's an hour on the Zoom, and so for both those, um, uh, you guys can just use this Calendly.com/slash/PirateLab, uh, which is how you guys can schedule for that. So of course, you know, you just want to pop up to tortillas. You, your tortillas, you have a question, you know, of course, come on over. But, but if you can, I recommend you, you, you click this link and just fill out a time slot. Then that, then I know definitely I prioritize you. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to drop in. But, but there might be somebody, you know, I'm already talking to. So that's a way to just sort of guarantee your slot. But, um, but uh, yeah, you don't have to use that. But that, that's the best way. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so, so uh, you guys can look over this more later, um, but basically uh, I have a bunch of quotes here that I'd like you guys to look at that speak to different dimensions of, um, of disasters and how we, how we conceptualize disasters, how they play out and everything. So just a couple are um, uh, from this, uh, the technical term is an a-hole guy that used to be the president of Union Oil, and in this case was, was talking about the 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill. Um, which was really the, the mother of modern oil spills, at least in the U.S., and how we conceptualize things. And so, so this guy said, um, uh, and I should note, that the only reason we knew there was an oil spill starting, or actually we didn't know when it started, but an anonymous caller went to a phone, pay, phone, pay booth, which you guys wouldn't know, but pay phone, uh, called up the phone and called the local newspaper in Santa Barbara and said, hey, you should really know what's going on out there. And they're like, what? Because it took a while for the oil to start to get to land. Um, and, and then it went, the primary flow for was for 11 days, and it just was like crazy, crazy, crazy. And, and as this was starting, and all the media was like, what's going on? The president of uh, what was known as Un Union Oil back then said, I don't like to call it a disaster because there's been no loss of human life. I'm amazed at the publicity for the loss of a few birds, right? Um, the guy would come to regret those words. Um, another one would be uh, in the wake of Hurricane Katrina in 2005, um, the then uh, President George W. Bush uh, uh, did not, so a, a traditional thing, we'll talk about this, a traditional thing is when we have a massive disaster is the president or the governor goes and visits, right? And maybe that helps, maybe that helps them understand, oh my gosh, I re really need these types of resources. That's how it, you know, back in the day, that's how it went. Today, it's usually more of a sort of psychological support and kind of showing that the person cares and that they're, they're, they're paying attention and stuff. Uh, famously, President Bush did not go to New Orleans after the um, flooding there happened, um, but flew over it, uh, essentially on, between some fundraising stops. And he was looking out over the plane, and he said, uh, as a bunch of reporters on the plane, he said, and reporters captioned him saying this, it's devastating, you know, up on the 747. It's devastating. It's got to be doubly devastating on the ground, right? Well, you know, thousands, more than a thousand people dead, all kinds of insanity, in ma massive American city not functioning for days and days and days. Yeah, doubly devastating was a very strange way to, to describe it. Um, and then we have, um, unfortunately, in our society right now, we are so jerky to one another and we're so apart and not together on these things, even when a disaster happens, which used to be something like foreign policy, it used to unite people and that we can put our differences away and understand this lady needs some help or this whatever farmer needs some support or whatever, that even that now has unfortunately become sort of 
increasingly partisan. And so again, another example from New Orleans, this is from a conservative um, firebrand talk show a-hole. Um, he said, this is a 90,000 square mile disaster site. Uh, New Orleans is, uh, meaning the area that was all declared a federal disaster zone, which we'll talk about. Um, a federal disaster zone is where you can get um, rapid aid and, and all kinds of other things. And if you don't have a federally declared disaster, FEMA, for example, cannot come in and do work. So, so he says, uh, this is a 90,000 square mile disaster site. New Orleans is 181 square miles, and he said some other stuff. And, uh, um, and that's all we're hearing about are the people in New Orleans. Those are the only ones we're seeing on television. Uh, uh, the only ones we're seeing on television are the scumbags. It's just a small percentage of those who were left in New Orleans or who decided to stay in New Orleans, and they're getting all the attention, right? So, so very much so a demonizing the victim and saying, you're, you know, these guys are hogging all the attention, you know, and that kind of stuff. As we'll learn about in this class, there was a fundamentally different thing that happened in New Orleans than happened in all those other areas. So there was a big hurricane caused problems all over to be sure, but what happened in New Orleans was a failure of the system that you all paid for, which was a hurricane prevention system, a, a, um, a, a system to keep floodwaters out that was designed to keep a Category 3 hurricane storm out. By the time this hurricane hit New Orleans, it was a Category 1, so it was a much weaker, it should have been like no problem, should have been yeah, maybe a little wet, but should have been um, no. And so, so it was massively devastating, but also, it was clearly human driven. It wasn't just the storm. Um, all, that, all that is lost in when we start throwing you know, mud pies at each other. Um, uh, and and I have, I, there's other examples in here, but um, uh, yeah, and, and, and there's other silliness in here. Um, I'll just say um, uh, Another example here from this, this one about Ebola, uh, the thing that we learned was it wasn't really, this is in the wake of the um, uh, massive disease outbreak in Africa, the thing that we learned was it wasn't really about Ebola. The topic of Ebola is a vehicle for all those other social, political, or financial goals. And so again, we see that a lot. So disasters, while they're, it's a crisis and it's a problem, um, it really just magnifies what's been going on before. So the racism, the lack of investment, the lack of sustainability, the lack of resilient infrastructure, all these things, um, uh, uh, all of our failings are made very, very evident in the wake of one of these crises. Um, and that's what this, this uh, uh, lady was saying. Um, yeah, some other, other uh, uh, quotes here that you guys should read. Um, but I'll just say that uh, uh, the last one here, from Ed Abbey, the, the environmental writer, um, is that action is the antidote to despair. So we'll be talking about a lot of stuff that might be really sad this semester, right? It's depressing and oh my gosh, these people are all hurt and this area is all destroyed and all this and that. Um, and it is sad and it is, it is you know, a problem. Um, but we're talking about this so we can call the problems out. We're talking about this so you guys have an awareness of what's going on so that we can respond and that we can begin to do things differently or, or, or add more energy to the things that we're trying to do more differently. So, so we talk about this so that we can actually make things better. Um, and so when you, if you do get bummed out when you're reading some of these reports or some of these studies or we're talking about something, um, take that energy and, and, try, and, and put it into, into fixing stuff, and because we, we totally can. These are, the magnitude of these damages are a consequence of our choice, choices, and we can make other uh, choices. So, okay, cool. All right, so when you have time later, you can read the, the full um, syllabus. I'll just read it, I'll just highlight a couple um, parts of it, but um, our description here is, uh, this course will introduce you to causes and effects of so-called natural disasters. And here I'll probably use the term natural and anthropogenic um, disasters. Um, such as hurricanes, droughts, earthquakes, oil spills, wildfires, zoonotic diseases. Uh, where relevant, we'll also explore available options to decrease the onset of these events and mitigate their consequences when they do occur. Disasters are consequential in their own right, um, but they're also growing both in frequency and intensity to the point where virtually everybody's affected by these. So, you know, kind of back in the day, the sort of lore was, oh, those people in California have earthquakes. Um, 
we have earthquakes all over the place, right? Even though that was sort of the, the thought. Um, oh, those people in the south have hurricanes, right? We had a, a, hurri a tail of a hurricane take out the fishing pier that was here in 1923 in Magoo. We used to have a fishing pier off of Magoo. Um, we just, this last summer, had not, not, the, not a full hurricane, but the tail end of a hurricane that dumped a huge amount of water, made, it, made a huge impact. Thankfully, nobody got hurt, but, but had significant consequence for us really helping us, in that case, um, stave off the, you know, keep staving off the drought, for example. So, so these things are really expanding and, and everybody is <clears throat> impacted by them uh, one way or the other. Um, disasters are also a powerful tool to explore shortfalls in our own society, highlighting the unsustainability, unsustain fragility, or unjustness of many of our foundational systems. Um, so we're going to, uh, our learning outcomes here are going to focus on the, the, the types and the causes of, of disasters. Um, to illustrate the connections between a lot of these things that we might be talking about in our other classes and, and to these things, which maybe um, for some of us don't have a direct ESRM. I mean, we can sort of see the related ESRM, but we can't maybe always see the direct ties, so we'll try to hopefully make those things more clear over the course of the semester. Um, you guys get more practice uh, looking at data, graphing, looking at data, and, and, and looking at relationships. And then, um, and then you guys at the end this should be able to propose some general policies. You're not going to be a disaster expert per se and be able to go work for FEMA necessarily, but, but you should understand the broad strokes of what's been going on and how we should therefore, as a society, what kind of broad strokes we should be taking to mitigate um, that. Okay. Um, so we'll be using a bunch of tools. So our default thing is going to, I'm going to ask you guys to bring um, a computer with you to class. So. Um, uh, we'll be doing, uh, not, not today per se, but we'll be doing, you know, looking at some data sets, do this and that. So by default, bring your laptop to, uh, to class. Um, I already mentioned the Scoop It uh, thing, which is a little news curation uh, site, and, and I'll, I'll show you guys that. It's also a little module on that. Um, we might be using, Ez we hopefully will be using Esri Maps. So um, uh, it'd be great if uh, you guys want to make your own maps and all that kind of stuff, but really we're talking about the online applications that other folks have created to visualize wildfires or to visualize where uh, the hurricane track would be going or something like that. Um, uh, and then for graphing, um, I don't want you to use Excel. So Excel is a great tool for manipulating data and organizing stuff. That's super cool. It sucks for making professional graphs. So. Um, uh, the default thing I'll, I'll suggest you guys to use is Plotly. So if, you, if you're familiar with, any, you can use any professional graphing tool you want. So if you guys are a Tableau person, cool. If you like R, Python, knock yourself out. That's totally cool. But uh, if you're not familiar with those other tools, um, Plotly is a browser-based uh, tool to make simple, mostly simple graphs, and it'll work well for us. Um, and you can sign up, and I should say all these things, just to be clear, all these things, including Scoop It, even though it might try to trick you at times, all these things are free. So you don't need to pay for any of these, these online tools, okay? So if, you've, if you um, uh, aren't sure what's going on, go through, the, go through our um, modules today. Um, and if, it's still not, if you're still not sure what's going on, uh, poke me and I'll help you get uh, on. Most of them you should have gotten it not all of them, but most of them you should have gotten an email invite and you should just be able to click that link, but sometimes those things go to our spam or, or whatever. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, Plotly you sign up through your browser. Uh, all these things are browser based. Uh, we'll, we'll be using Google Docs and Google Sheets and stuff uh, to, to organize uh, some data and stuff. Um, we'll be using a, a bibliographic software program that's free. So, so the one that I prefer is called EndNote, um, but I've just sort of given up because I've, I've suggested it to you guys over the years and, be, and it's like 100 bucks, 125 bucks. Mm -hmm. And you guys are like, oh my God, it's too expensive. Even though it, it saves you tens of thousands of dollars over your lifetime, but, but that's okay. Um, so Zotero is a similar thing. It's not quite as good, but it's, it's a similar thing, but it's browser-based. And so I've set up a group shared bibliography. So when we start, uh, not this week, when we start doing stuff, um, I want you guys to just be adding your references in there. And um, I, I've, I've been struggling the last couple of years to try to get you guys to use bibliographic software. And, and everybody's like, oh yeah, Dr. A, I'll do it. Or they'll do the exercise and they blow it off. And then the, the paper comes at the end of the semester and they're manually typing stuff in and they type the things incorrectly and stuff. So, so this is me trying to save you guys a ton of time, even though it sounds like I'm make, making work for you. It really, 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 really saves you time. So these bibliographic software tools 
um, will really streamline your life. No matter what you do when you graduate, you're gonna have to do some type of reporting, you have to do some kind of organizing stuff, and these are really, really useful tools. So we'll be uh, experimenting with, with this thing called Zotero this year. So you haven't gotten the invite to that, but, but next week you'll get that. Uh, Slack, then we're using Slack, as I mentioned, for communication. And so, so again, you guys should have all got an invitation to that. Um, and then uh, I'm going to ask you guys, one of our assignments is to make uh, a little uh, video of, of some aspect of disasters. And so you don't think fancy, just a smartphone. So, so you know, if, if you have a super fancy camera, you're more than welcome to use a super fancy camera. But I just want to make sure that people can make a simple, quick video. Um, and our very, one of our very first assignments this week is to just do a quick 30-second introduction of yourself. And so just, that just tells me you, you can make a video and more about the detail and video later. Um, so those are those things. As far as uh, there is no official book, textbook for us. Um, so all of our readings are online. And so uh, each week, as you'll see when we start going, going through the modules, there'll be, there'll be readings. So it might be... Um, an audio thing, it might be a, a video or, or an actual more traditional paper, but they'll all be together in, in a, a unified page for that week so you guys can go through those. Um, mostly, you got to look at all of it. Sometimes I might have some extra readings on there um, that will be clearly stated, it'll be in a subsection, it'll say optional. So you don't have to read the optional stuff or view the optional stuff. But I think it's either important for that topic, so if you're really interested in that topic, read it, or it was something that um, maybe it was a paper from a couple years ago or, or, a, or a report from a couple years ago that was cool, but we have a better one now, but it still has value. So that's what the optional stuff is. So I would say when you get to something that's an optional thing, I'd like sort of quickly skim it. If it's of interest, go for it, but, but even though it's in the readings, you're not, you're not required, won't be tested on or anything like that, the, the optional stuff. Um, uh, obviously, we're, we're posting s stories on a scoop it, and so you guys should be looking at all these stories, right? So you get so when people post stories, you should be um, reading them. They're not going to be like 25 million pages long or anything. Um, uh, most of our stuff is related. So if we're talking about wildfires, most of our stuff is about wildfires. For the scoop it thing, it could be anything related to disasters. It could be related to wildfires. It could be something about an earthquake, you know, or whatever. Um, so the scoop, it's a bit more of a kind of just be to the planet kind of thing. Um, but, the, but you do have to get something here. But so, so while you're not getting a textbook, um, you guys need to get, uh, and if you already have one, that's great, um, but you need a, a, sub a subscription to two newspapers. Right? So um, I would encourage you to get a year subscription, but uh, you can go ahead and just get like a six-month Subscription is, is, you know, just for the duration of the class and a little bit, little bit longer is fine. Um, I don't care what newspaper you subscribe to. So there's a, but a few examples up here. Um, as long as you have a newspaper subscription, that's cool. Um, uh, with conservation, with disasters, with these things, we really, really need an, a, a robust media. To have a functioning democracy, we need a robust media. Just yesterday, uh, yesterday, the day before, one or the other, uh, the Los Angeles Times just announced they were laying off another 120 people from their newsroom. This is a huge problem, right? Everybody talks about it as a problem for democracy, as it is, um, but it's also a problem for disasters, right? So when we have, we have a disaster event, we need folks to go out and tell us what's going on, how, how many buildings were knocked down, and how many, how many folks need help and all this and that. And as we have the hollowing out of our media, it gets harder and harder to know that, and therefore it gets harder and harder for us to have a just response to an appropriate response to these things. So one thing you guys can do is, is uh, support our, our fourth pillar, our, our fourth, in, fourth institution in our democracy. Again, I don't care what you subscribe to, but, but, um, but something. And so you can just do, regularly subscribe, but most of these places will have student um, student rates, which are substantially cheaper than, than the regular rates. I would argue even the regular rates are relatively cheap, but, but still. Um, uh, these are some of the most popular ones in terms of th that do good um, disaster coverage. But again, anything uh, is, is cool. Um, we also have a lot of free stuff. And so you guys will do a lot of free posting of things, which is totally fine, right? A lot of uh, 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 freely viewable, The Guardian or, or any of these things, totally cool. But period, uh, you know, 
uh, new paragraph, um, it ain't free to do all this stuff, right? And um, the, the old model where people would have ads has been completely destroyed by Google and Facebook and all this kind of stuff. So, so these, these institutions are losing money. So, so in addition, so you have, to, you have to get two subscriptions for the duration of our class. Um, and you know, we're talking, we're talking 20 to 50 bucks if, if something like that, right? So no textbook, so, so that's, that's a relatively reasonable fee. I'd also suggest that for these things that you guys can just get for free, Inside Climate News, LAS, ProPublica, all these ones, you can read them as long as you want all day long for free, but you know, it's kind of a bit of an a-hole move to just sort of take everything, right? So, so maybe a $5 donation or something like that would be appreciated. I'm not gonna check on you, but, but that's a good responsible citizen to make sure that these folks are getting a little bit of Skrilla to make sure they can still cover disasters and that kind of stuff. So again, I don't care which ones, but, but you guys should be, ha should be able to look deep into some of these newspapers, not just like the, the three fee, fee, free views kind of thing. Cool? All right, good. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, there's some stuff here about all this and that, blah, 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 blah. Um, I already talked about some of this stuff. Uh, we can skip this for later. Okay, so, so how, how, how are you guys going to get evaluated in this class? So scuba posts, right? So a little bit of the grades from scuba posts. Notes will be about four different times that I'll just, uh, so I, I record, we talked about this in my um, recording that you guys can watch. Uh, on Monday if you weren't in our class, but suffice it to say, um, I want you guys to, to work specifically on, on having some kick butt notes this semester, right? So, so I know a lot of you um, from our discussions on, on Monday, a lot of you are, oh yeah, Dr. A, I, I do this, whatever, cool. Um, copy over, right? Re, re, uh, clean up your notes. So, so when we're done with a lecture, when we're done with a lab, when we're done with a module, don't just sort of like close the book and put it away take a few minutes and reorganize your notes, right? Copy it over, type it up, whatever, make it nice. And so what I'll do is a couple points during the semester, I'll say, kind of surprise, I'll just say, hey guys, so um, like, you know, it's, it's Wednesday today. I say, hey guys, by, by five o'clock tonight, just, just upload your um, last week's notes or whatever, right? And just, just so I can take a look. And so you can either, if you have an electronic, you can just like save as a PDF and throw it up. Or if you have them written out, that's cool. You can just take a photo and just send me the photo. Um, I just want to just want to sort of give you guys some feedback. So I, I, this is not sort of a gotcha thing. It's like, hey, let me see how I can help you guys. How can we how can we um, tighten that up? And note taking is a really really important skill, and it, especially since the pandemic, I think a lot of people are like whatever, you know, turn my computer on type, and we sort of lost some of that skill. So so want to um, make sure you guys are doing good notes, since that's just essentially a note check in that we'll do. Uh, after this week, we'll have uh, weekly quizzes about stuff for the last week or so, last week or two. Um, simple, yes, no, fill in the blank, um, you know, um, uh, true, false kind of thing. So not meant to be a huge amount of time, but just meant to make sure everybody's keeping up with, with what we're talking about. Um, we'll talk about this later, but you guys are going to give us a little um, sort of tour of a, of a disaster site. Um, you guys are going to be working on some case studies of different disasters. Um, and then the bulk, of, the bulk of stuff is just stuff we'll work on. Lab this week, we're doing this and that, and so it all gets sub subsumed into our assignments. There'll be a final assessment. Um, probably not, I don't like to do finals, so probably not a final test uh, exam, but rather a, a, a assignment similar to some of the stuff we've been doing, and you guys, it'll be like a take home kind of thing, and you guys can work on that. Um, and then just a general generic participation thing. Um, I mentioned the field trips, so the intent is for us to do hopefully at least one or two field trips, um, but not for these first few weeks. So I'll give you guys a lot of heads up um, when those are coming on. Um, don't cheat, don't plagiarize, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, I mentioned yeah, I want you guys to bring your computer to class, and uh, I have a, a very brief, um, that this will absolutely 100% change. But I have a, a very brief sort of outline of, of what I think we might be talking about in different weeks. And so that'll get filled in in, in the next uh, week or two as we kind of, as I start to figure out how, how fast or how slow we're going in our class. So that's that. I'll just show you guys real briefly our website or our Canvas site. So, um, so we have some stuff here. If we have to go virtual or we, for example, we might have hopefully have a couple guest speakers at some point that might be zooming in from Maui or other places. Um, and so if we do have to 
to kick to virtual for a day or, or because we have a speaker or whatever. Um, this, if you just click this, join our live session, that links to our Zoom. So if you ever need to get on our class Zoom, um, you can jump on that. That's not my office hour one. The office hours were generated individually for you guys, but, but that's our, if something goes weird and there's a big storm and campus is closed, that's how you can get on there. You can also just click this again to make a, a office, uh, uh, office hour meeting with me. Um, uh, this will just sort of take you into the very first module and sort of orient us around. Um, and this, theoretically, yeah. Okay, so um, so this is how I, I, I typically organize stuff. So there'll be, um, here we can just click on, this is, this is next week's, but. Um, so it'll be a little thing that I just try to give you guys a heads up, I'm like, hey, this week or this module, we're talking about like A, B, C, and D kind of deal. Um, and then this is an example of, of our readings for the week. So there'll be some thing, it'll say what it is, and there'll be maybe a little bit of a preamble or something. And then in this case, here's a video, here's a video, here's another video, and then here's the, here are these different um, uh, papers that you can read. Uh, sometimes, um, because, of the, because it might be um, on a website or something like that, um, there might be this main, so this is the main thing you guys would click on, but sometimes there's, I don't know if I have any here. I guess I don't have any in this week. Um, uh, but there might be something um, where uh, it might be sort of behind a paywall or something for some folks. So if that's the case, over here I'll have like a, a, a PDF version of it. It might not be as pretty, it might not have all the cool bells and whistles. But if there is a restricted access, there'll also be like a secondary link you guys can click if that, that first one doesn't go through. Um, so yeah, and then you just keep clicking through and there'll be things like whatever our assignment is that week and this is this lab we'll do next week by talking about news stories and stuff. So that's our, that's our, that's our, default, um, that's our default guy. Cool, any logistics questions about, about that stuff? Okay, so do have a look at it today. If something isn't working, since it was just turned on, right? If something isn't working, hey Dr. Ray, the module two, I can't see it or something, just, just poke me in Slack and I'll, I'll figure it out.